In this video, I want to talk about the proofs regarding e and log. The relationships used are a bit confusing, so I want to organize their sequences. It's based on the calculus book by Richard Curran. The property of log is critical in the proofs. First, let's be clear what need to be proved. First one is about using e to express any continuous growth. We've said that one unit of natural growth rate becomes e unit in one unit time. Then, for a growth rate of r, the result is e to the power of r. We showed it in an intuitive way, but we need to prove that these two very different terms are equal indeed. The second proof is regarding log. We've talked about the log operation that calculates the natural growth rate. We've only shown it empirically, that it seems to be the case. But mathematically, we need to prove that this log operation can indeed extract the natural growth rate. Okay, let's first prove this product relationship. First, let's review log. If you know when unit becomes x unit. Then log operation calculates the continuous growth rate for one unit. You divide the overall change into certain intervals. Then you calculate the incremental contribution and sum them up. This gives you an approximation of the rate. Now let's take a look at the algebra from log, from geometrical perspective. Let's use the horizontal axis to mark the different sizes during growth. The vertical axis to represent the weight of different sizes. When the size is one, the weight is one over one. The small growth can be represented by this width here. Hence, the rectangular area can represent this product. After the growth, it becomes slightly bigger. At this size, the weight is one over this new size. Then, with the same width, this area represents the new product. At the bigger size, the weight is the inverse of it. Then another area for the product. So each product can be represented by these rectangular areas with decreasing height until it reaches x unit. Now the summation becomes the sum of these areas. This is only an approximation of the log, unless the intervals are really, really small. When we use an infinite number of steps, so that the stepwise width is approaching zero, only then we can say the log x obtained is accurate. Now, what will the area become then? Each bar will shrink to a line, falling perfectly along a curve. So log x equals to the area. Of this curvy segment, the curve has a formula of the inverted size. The value of size can extend to infinity. It can also be smaller than one, approaching zero, meaning it's a decay. Whatever the size is, the weight is always the inverse of it. Now we can interpret log in terms of geometry. If x is greater than one, it's the area under the curve from one to x. If x is smaller than one, so that it's a decay problem, the rate is the negative of the area under the curve from x to one. Viewing log as area allows us to see relationships in an easier way. For example, log a b equals to log a plus log b. What this is saying is that to change from one unit to a units, we need a rate of log a. But if you want b times of that. Then you need an extra rate of log b. Let's consider them in geometry. Say a is here, greater than one. Then log a is the area under the curve from one to a, the green area. Say b is greater than a, so log b is this red area. Say a b is here. Then log a b is the blue area. If we rearrange this formula. The difference between these two is the difference between the blue area and the red, so this yellow area. 
This relationship is saying these two areas are equal. Now let's prove that using algebra. Think about area log a by dividing the width into n intervals and sum up the area. For the yellow area, it's the area under the curve from b to ab. We divide the length into n intervals and then add up those incremental areas. If we compare these two intervals, it's easy to see that the second one is b times of the first. Hence, we can replace them here. Now, setting the common factor b aside, they can be crossed out. Hence, it equals to log a. You can also prove this relationship, whether a and b are greater than 1 or not. I'm not going to show that here. Now, using this relationship, it's easy to see that log x to the power of n equals to n times log x. Now, what if the power term is not an integer, but instead some fractal numbers? Then we can always write it as a ratio of two integers. We can do the fractional power first, then raise to m times. m can be taken to the front. Now, say this fractional power term is y. We're asking for m log y. If we raise it to the power of n, we have x equals to y to the power of n. Hence, log x equals to n times log y. So log y is 1 over n of log x. Plug it into here. It equals to m over n times log x. So we have a general relationship. Log a to the power of x equals to x times log a. Here, x can be either integers or fractions. Next, we'll use it to prove that log e is 1. Remember, e is the end result of continuous growth. So log e is log of this continuous growth term. Now, log and limit operations are commutative, meaning that the sequence doesn't matter. So we can do log first and then take limit and can be taken to the front. Let's consider log in geometry. Log 1 plus 1 over n is the area under the curve from 1 to 1 plus 1 over n. What's the limit of this area when n goes to infinity? So these two would be super close. Hence, the area approaches a rectangle with a height of 1 and the width of 1 over n. This might sound very simple, but it's actually based on mean value theorem of calculus. So that means this term equals to n times 1 over n, which is 1. So we have proved that log e is 1. Once that's proved, then it's easy to see that log e to the power of r equals to r times log e, which is r. So we have proved that log is the right operation to extract continuous growth rate. Now let's prove the first one. To prove these two are equal, we can take log on both sides and argue that if the two logs are equal, then it means the two are equal. It's like you do the same thing to two objects. If the end results are the same, you argue that the original objects are also the same. The right side is just r. So we need to prove that the left side is also r. The proof is very similar to before. First, we switch the operation, then move n to the front. Then consider log as the area under the curve between 1 and 1 plus r over n. Now as n goes to infinity, the area approaches a rectangle with a height of 1, width of r over n. So the limiting area equals to r over n. So these terms approaches n times r over n, which is r. Since the two logs are the same, we conclude that these two are equal. So that means 
natural growth at any rate r can be expressed as e to the power of r. Now the first one is also proved. Let me remind you of their meanings. First one means e is the language to express any natural growth. Second one is saying log is the right operation to get that natural growth rate. 